Welcome to Best Life Ever, the podcast with your hosts, time and energy coaches, Kimi and Pua. Here at Best Life Ever, we are on a mission to expand the way people think, work, and live in today's modern world. Today, we have an interview with Emma Kupu Mitchell, who is one of our BLE Buzz members. Emma Kupu has been a practitioner of holistic therapies for over 25 years. Using this extensive knowledge of ancient practices, she guides you on a full sensory journey back to wholeness, guiding you to find sacred silence and space from the overstimulation of the day-to-day world. Emma Kupu's love and exploration of the senses has led her to believing that these are the pathways for the soul. And without further ado, let's welcome Emma Kupu Mitchell. Well, welcome, Emma, to the podcast. So nice to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be with you both. (laughs) We've been looking forward to this, and we are so excited for you to share with our audience a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Absolutely. It's a pleasure, and thank you for inviting me to be on your podcast Well, who am I? Well, my Hawaiian name is Kupu, so I'm Emma Kupu Mitchell, a wife, a mother, and a deep soul explorer of the senses, um, the human divine experience, and my business really is based around that, so helping others to journey back to their fullness, their wholeness, by awakening the soul and all the senses Um, because I think in this modern day world if we look around how chaotic it is how overstimulated I think all of us are me included in this by the way I'm not some elevated being that has mastered this by any chance Um, you know what I share is my own experience but I think we're so overstimulated in so many ways that I love sharing and assisting others in finding that sacred pause, that wholeness, reclaiming the part of themselves that they've maybe put aside for whatever reason. Wow. Emma, you are such a you you're so you're you're so calm and you're so grounded. And, you know, we've spent some time with you and you are also just so full of life and we just laugh with you. Every time we're with you, we laugh because you're just so <laughs> excited about what you do. And and I just think you're, you have such a clear grasp on what truly brings you joy and what makes your heart sing. And I'm always so fascinated to hear your story because you've had quite an array of experiences and, and, you know, both personal and professional uh, jobs. And and we'd love to hear kind of your path to this work and how you found this as your passion and your calling. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I think it started when I was a little girl growing up on a farm in England. And um, I'm a twin. I have a beautiful twin sister, Fiona. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm, and we actually are born on separate days. So I, being the little rebel, decided to not come out until way after midnight. <laughs> so fast track back 49 years ago, there was no scans. There wasn't the high-tech equipment that we have nowadays, right? Um, so I was hidden behind my sister. And I'm sharing this because I think... That experience, looking back now, really determined um, my personality and what I chose to birth into life. Um, And I love my sister and I had great parents and growing up on this farm, but I always wanted to be slightly different from my sister. I think the outside world, teachers, family to some extent always compared us. And I didn't want to be compared. I am my own individual. And I spent much of my time doing everything my sister didn't to be separate. And that was playing with the plants, the flowers, um, the trees, my pony. 
and connecting with the natural world. And that navigated me through my teenage years and my sister was a straight A student. I wasn't, I have to add. My passion was always having fun and doing the best that you can if in your heart you know that is the best. Um, and so me failing a lot of my exams <laughs> set me up for looking within and what did I really love to do. And the one thing I knew I loved to do was be in nature. So that kind of led me to college in Manchester. I scraped enough grades to get through what I needed to do for the entrance exam. So at 18, we, we graduate a lot earlier in England. I went off to North Manchester College, 200 miles from where I grew up, um, got a little bed sit, a flat, and there I was for two years, immersed in a wonderful program, which was very holistic. It looked at the body in massage and looked at the face, that the human being as one whole person. So, you know, in various parts of the world, like the U.S. here, you license in massage therapist or you, you may license as an esthetician. We kind of do a two year round program or I did back then. Um, and so we view the person as this holistic whole being. And I learned all forms of energy, massage, holistic healing. Um, and I think the biggest difference, you know, Kimmy and Poor for me is growing up in England, our healthcare system is just very different. Um, it's not better or right, or it's just different to particularly here in the US because um, our taxes are higher. And so we have the national health. A lot of our health ser services are free, but that empowers people to take more accountability of their own health first because it's going to cost the government a lot of money right if we go um, here it's slightly opposite so it's just a different perception of health and life and so mm. that set set me up really just growing up immersed in nature in the herbs um, and, and learning more about preventative health and what makes you happy. I do have to say my dad is probably my biz, biggest inspiration. Um, farmed all his life, really a secretive entrepreneur, you know. He's very savvy with business and life. And he set me up. Um, I actually found a Georgian hotel house beautiful listed building in a market town where my mom had grown up and I said dad you know I'd love to buy that and set a business up helping people relax and feel good about themselves and he said okay if that's what you want to do go do it I'll stand guarantor on quarter of a million pounds um, and just do it and I did you know at 22 we bought the property on a mortgage and I had a business and that was the starting point. Would I do that now? Gosh, Kimmy, and Paul, I don't know, you know, <laughs> feel the fear and do it anyway. You know, naivety is bliss, isn't it? But I still, it's one of my core beliefs today in, in work that if it feels good within you, go for it. Wow. How cool. So what was the space like? Tell us more about it. And, and how long did you, uh, what was it called? How long did you work out of that space? Oh, well, it's still, I mean, it still lights up my heart. Mm. It was a house originally, I think, built in, gosh, 1650. Can you imagine that? It was listed because it had these porthole um, windows, these circular windows in the brick building and it's three story it's an old three story building at the end of walker gate and this market town is still going today there's a race course it's a traditional roman built little town in the northern part of england and this house um, that i bought i converted with all three floors so that the ground floor 
was a, a shop, a retail shop with thalassotherapy, essential oils, everything that you would want to um, put on the skin or your body. And then you'd go upstairs to the first floor, which was a relaxation room. And then I had four treatment rooms with showers and massage tables. And I had six staff. So I started little old me and two girls. And then we built the business up, which I had for about nine years. So I set the business up and um, within about a year met my first husband, who was from Liverpool. Geographically, for the listeners that don't know England that well, Beverly from Liverpool, it's Beverly is on the east coast of England, and Liverpool is on the west coast, and you have to cross the Pennines. It's about 200, 200 250 miles one way. So that changed the aspect of my work a little bit. I would work Monday to Thursday, nine to nine, and then my manager would continue the business. But it got a little bit lame talking about best life ever. That wasn't (laughs) at that time. I was exhausted (laughs) from driving, overwhelmed with running the business, and really couldn't dedicate time to a new marriage. Um, And so I withdrew a little bit from that and ended up putting my manager in full time while I um, spent a bit of time on the marriage. But sadly, the marriage, it was challenging. Ten years I stayed married, but um, unfortunately he was an addictive alcoholic. And um, that actually led me to learn a lot about myself. And where would I put my time and energy? And it was into the things I love to do, which is teaching and sharing um, how to be healthy and whole. Um, So one of the companies that I'd had in my business, um, a thalassotherapy company, asked if I would be their international trainer. Isn't it funny when in the depths of a really negative situation in my marriage, that I felt so lonely at probably one of my lowest points in my life, which I didn't share with anybody until I was strong enough to ask for a divorce. I plowed my time and energy into taking this role on as international trainer and spent probably the last two years during separation of being abroad, opening beautiful hotels and spas around the world whilst having my business. Yeah, so um, that shares a little bit of the story. Mm. I think it's a great lesson today, you know, that the memory. And the beautiful thing is, I I, I mean, I moved fast track right to 2000 here. I ended up opening the Kahala Hotel here in Hawaii on Oahu um, with the British company I was working for. Back then, it was the Mandarin Oriental Hotel Group that owned the Kahala, and I'd opened all their hotels, the spas globally, you know, from Singapore to New York to London. Um, And then I ended up here, which was great. Um, But I, and I kept my business in England for a while. In fact, I only just sold it probably about 10 years ago. So it's still going. I go back to England and I see it and it just brings such a smile to my face. But Aww. yeah, it's still going as 101 Walker Gate. It was called 101, the beauty studio. And it's still named um, under the number of the house. Wow. So if you go to England, ladies, go check it out. <laughs> oh, definitely will. That's Say, hey, awesome. I, I know Emma Mitchell. <laughs> That's amazing. And thank you for sharing that part of your story. I think we talk with a lot of people who are in kind of professional transition, which, you know, that's always a really interesting thing to learn about and to hear people's experience with professional transition. But what we may not touch on as much, but as is equally important is that emotional transition and how we can use our kind of our our pain and the the things that pull us down into those really, as you said, really dark places and connect our hearts to the things that bring light 
back to our lives and allow us to grow even in that place of darkness. And, and so thank you so much. I think that's going to resonate with a lot of people and really be inspirational for people to kind of, you know, deal with what they're dealing with, but know that there is so much light on the other side. I think that's really important for people to hear because, you know, when you're in that place, it, it feels very easy to just give up, right? It's Oh, totally. I, yeah. I mean, there's two choices, aren't there? I mean, it's it's how we choose to see the situation. And of course, I could have gone down into a depressed state um, and maybe suppressed my feelings, you know, with some form of addiction, eating, whatever it is, right? Um, and some days, I mean, don't get me wrong, we all have the ups and downs, but right. I really believe on a soul level that things don't happen to us but they happen for us and if it's hard right to think I chose a husband that was a very hidden abusive alcoholic but I did and you think I wouldn't say oh great Emma chose that yeah bring it on you know but on some level the gifts that came from that and and how I write poor channeled that depths of sorrow and pain into something beautiful and it became my motivating factor that I know there's a better life on the other side and really nobody else is going to save me I have the ability and the drive and passion to make something better and not just for me but inspire lots of other women um and men, you know, it can happen to anybody to, to to just turn that around. So, you know, it's that that saying, isn't it? Do you view your life or you know what's happening to you or for you? And is it half full or half empty? You know, is that cup? It's how we see it. Mm, love that. So fast forward to current day kupu <laughs> how, how are you uh spending your days now and um how how do you continue to help others to to heal and to as you had mentioned before sort of um deal with all of the noise that exists in in this day and age um can you share a little bit about uh your beautiful business as it is now Absolutely. And it's it's all, always evolving. In fact, just a couple of years ago, I changed the name. My original business when I came here was Healing for the Healer's Soul. And then life takes over. Um, and I had to end up nursing my dad through a brain surgery. And I realized that Emma the Healer could not really hold space at that time for others. And it wasn't resonating with me. So my business today is under my name and I'm embodying the Hawaiian spiritual name I got given and given my, my husband here um, is native Hawaiian that Kupu, um, Emma Kupu Mitchell is my business today. And Kupu, Kupu is that beautiful fern and the symbology of my business relating to kupu is we all grow and evolve out of our tap root towards the light, just as the kupu kupu fern does naturally. That's really the essence of my business, Kimmy, today is that Emma Kupu Mitchell assists in creating this sacred pause, this sacred space using the senses to bring and assist people back to wholeness because I believe everybody and the natural state of the human being is to re-remember we know how to be whole it's just life takes over right and we get busy and you know how we deal with stress can affect us mentally or physically or psychologically so how my business looks today, I, I offer regular meditations here on the islands using sound and scent. So I'm often described as a full sensory soul guide. And really, I, I use the living presence of all these senses. You know, 
everybody can hear what we want to hear and what needs to be heard, but these crystalline sounds, beautiful crystal alchemy bowls that I use, create this sweet vibration that's like nothing else. It's very etheric. Um, the reason I love them so much is that the silicon quartz crystal we actually our cellular level is mainly silicon you know when the physical body decomposes if we could look at it through a microscope our physical cellular beings a lot of the organs are silicon that's what's left of us so silicon translates in these quartz crystal bowls um, in the same way and then we play the sound it resonates on a very deep cellular level with who we are. And when we become imbalanced or out of harmony or stressed, whatever word you want to call it, the body then restricts and holds on to the negative vibrational aspect, that heavy, dense imbalance, and we stuff it down. And what's so beautiful is the sound works not only physically, but mentally and emotionally, because it shifts the energy moving through the body and through the brainwave state. So naturally, when we're in our doing state, the brainwave pattern is very busy. You know, those delta, beta, what brainwave patterns. But when we move into this crystalline sound, and a lot of music or vibration can generate the same pattern. We move into something called theta. And if we could measure the brainwave state, it goes into this beautiful, slow, receptive space where we navigate between the left and right hemisphere of the brain. It's a very um, meditative, almost when you've been asleep and prior to waking where the dream state can be very active and you feel you know in this in between very relaxed state that's how it feels when you're in this sound meditation so that's the the foundation of my work today whether i'm doing classes online or individual sessions or workshops or meditations I always bring in these crystalline bowls because within 10 minutes it helps people navigate out of the busy doing action oriented life into this stillness receptivity very creative healing space Kimmy so, I, I mean, I use sound and scent through plant medicine, and I weave in my license. I'm a yoga nidra and vinyasa yoga certified teacher as well. So I breathe, bring in a lot of the breathing and the, the other aspects to creating stillness. Beautiful. I'm often wow. called the Mary Poppins here. I have a few local friends that call me Tidder Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> Quite funny because I'm like this this woman that comes in, I open my bag of goodies and I'm like, what are we going to use today? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Tidder Poppins, that is exactly what you do. I mean, we were so lucky to – be able to experience this. And I think it was just a sample of what you do, but we, you know, we were at, we were at a meeting. It was, you know, we were in a, in a very, uh, I mean, you know, the space is beautiful, but it had fluorescent lights, the tables, the chairs. It was very kind of meeting feeling. And all of a sudden we turned off the lights, everyone closed their eyes and just the sound that resonated from these bowls and the way that it filled the space. And I just remember like as you moved around the room and as you got closer to me, the sound just kind of like, like I, I imagine in my head this balloon and it just it enveloped the space like a cloud. It was just incredible. And I have no idea how long we were sitting there. It felt like, as you said, it felt like I had drifted off to sleep because when the when when it all ended and we didn't turn the lights on right away because everyone was in this state of like, 
total, almost like enlightenment. It was just so transformative in this space that felt very almost almost corporate. Like, you know, it was a meeting. And all of a sudden we were in this, I felt like I was in a cloud of sound. It was just unbelievable. And if you guys are listening to this, find a way to experience this with Emma because it is unbelievable. Um, So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I love your explanation of the crystals and why, why crystal bowls? Why this, this, why did you choose that? It's not, it's not an accident, right? It's, it yeah. resonates with the cellular composition of our bodies. And that is so interesting to me. Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing that. And that, I don't know how long we were there. It was a short <laughs> little glimpse, you know. Um, and the listeners, it's always, I mean, we could play today. The thing with the sound, it doesn't translate so well over technology. Bizarrely, I mean, here we are, right, talking um, together or from our own different places in computers and, and a lot of our technology today, they actually put silicon chips in that because it it's a messenger. It can communicate these energetic impulses amazingly well. So it's put in um, scans and infrared machines and computers and cellular phones because they found that silicon, quartz crystal silicon, it has this amazing messenger communicative effect and that's exactly for what you were describing really everybody feels and senses the sound in their own unique way and it's always perfect at the time that you hear it Um, and so uh, on my website I did have a lot of the sounds recorded professionally here in Manoa with Pierre Grill. He has a beautiful sound recording studio built into the mountain. Um, And there I was, I took all my 15 to 20 bowls and was immersed for hours recording little sound bites, five minute um, sound meditations that people can download or go to the website and listen. Um, uh, don't please little disclaimer do not listen while you're driving or operating any heavy machinery you know how we're sat here on, on the freeway and you think great I can get from Kapole to um, Kahala by listening to Emma Cooper's sounds and it'll it'll be wonderful but you do move out of your physical body and you move into this theta um state which you're right you almost feels like you're levitating actually the body and and the senses become this vastness of all that is um not safe to drive right (laughs) (laughs) yes levitation great great for meditation not for driving uh (laughs) wonderful well you know all of these tools that you have and all the things that comes out of to the Poppins bag. It, they really <laughs> all are about self care and uh, nurturing the self. And as you said, bringing yourself back to wholeness. And uh, we would love to shift the conversation, although it's not much of a shift to the subject of self care, because we know that you've been thinking about this a lot lately with the launch of your new podcast, Awaken Woman Self Care. So tell us a little bit about that project and Talk to us about why why self care. Why do we need it? Uh, maybe why why do we don't get don't give it to ourselves? <laughs> perhaps. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, tell us tell us about self care and why you're so passionate about it. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's back to that same old saying, isn't it? That that we teach what we need to hear. <laughs> and I think <laughs> the, the podcast was birthed out of a collaboration with a dear soul sister in Canada called Christine Penza. She's a creative shamanic way shower. And um, we collaborated and we met through an online program and we just had this instant soul level connection, probably like you and you and Pua. Um, and so we decided, both of us, that we'd love to channel our voice and our message and our, our backgrounds, hers in creative art and shamanic teaching and mine in sensory sound healing together and create a platform where we could reach a wider audience, really. And that is why 
the awakened woman self-care, and it's not that we don't love men, we do, and of course men can listen, but Christine and I are both mothers, daughters, um, entrepreneurs, and have aging parents, and we'd realize that women generally are not taught to look after themselves first, particularly my generation and older. Christine's nine years older than me. I'll be 50 next year. That, You know, I have a 13-year-old, and one thing I promise myself every day is that she is the most important thing, not only to me, but to herself. We all are, right? And it's something that I think women innately, on some level, have this guilty conscious of if we take care of ourselves first shouldn't we be taking care of others and looking after their needs well I learned the hard way that you know we only end up depleted resentful and we are no good to anybody if we do not take care of ourselves but the purpose really of the new podcast the self-care is to assist women and awakened women the reason we use that word is that the self-care today it's not just about treating yourself to a massage or a pedicure all that is wonderful but we're looking at self-care practices that spiritually feed and nourish all aspects of our being from a much deeper root because that's what's needed today right in in the world that the way forward, I believe, is for us all to take accountability for our own health and well-being every day through simple and easy self-care ritual. And that could be simply just stopping for a moment and being aware of your breath, or aware of the scents around you, the beauty around you, the tree, the flower, um, the, the breeze, the elements. I mean, the trade winds, the light from the sun. It doesn't have to be a 30-minute mantra meditation or a yoga practice. Although, again, they're wonderful, we are interviewing inspired women around the world and sharing their inspiration and their self-care practice through the podcast and it doesn't always have to be easy and positive some of their messages they found their their own self-care nourishment through the darkest most negative times um and so self-care i believe is medicine for your soul and it's not something so much about being outside of you but everyday living and its simplest form reconnecting back to you on a very deep but simple level um and i just come back again i circle back to how we do one thing is how we do everything And so the podcast is really inspiring conversations to ignite these simple but profound practices every day. Love that. And it's so interesting that we live in a time now where we have to relearn how to take care of ourselves. And, you know, we're, we're bombarded with everything, notifications, other people's priorities, other people's needs. And yet we, and we put ourselves last. And I don't believe that that's how we as humans were intended to live our lives, right? Like fun, fun takes a back seat. And if you're having fun, most people feel guilty when they enjoy themselves. And that to me is just like, it's absurd. And I'm so grateful that you have become this you've created all these channels to teach people and to bring awareness to people that enjoying life is something that we deserve and we, we don't deserve it, but it's like, it is something that, that we are put on this earth to do, or we're supposed to have fun. Right. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Isn't that, it is bizarre how we advanced in so many levels, right, in, in the external world through technology and, and awareness. And yet we really have come so far from the deeper aspects of the meaning of life really and I totally agree it's about time having fun and simplifying life so we can enjoy it more I mean there's almost a medal isn't it you're motivated and rewarded by how busy how full how much you've achieved how much you've learned in a day it's ridiculous in in many aspects that and I, I was raised that way that if I'm sitting for so long or doing something I love and playing, that is not productive. And so therefore it translates into being lazy and ineffective and a waste of time when in fact it's the opposite, isn't it? When you can create stillness and quiet on a deep level, we begin to hear more. So it's this paradigm that we need to recreate quiet and stillness in our day so that we can actually put priority on the things that feed and nourish us the most. But if with all this mind chatter and external noise, we get caught up in what we think we should be doing rather than stepping back and thinking, is that really nourishing me on the deepest level? It's a great question for listeners to ask themselves every day in every moment. And no, it's okay to say no, 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 in a polite way, (laughs) but just honoring yourself. That's part of self-care. And this British girl, of course, was told by my mum, who's a bit like the queen, um, (laughs) that you you don't say no, you know, it's just not polite. Then you you honor somebody else's, you don't want to offend them, my gosh. But it's it's just being truthful and authentic. So the sacred no is what I call it. The sacred no, that's so beautiful. That's something we definitely need to hear. (laughs) Yes, the the ultimate act of self care, right? That's the easiest. Sometimes that's the easiest hack for for taking care of yourself is just saying no to something that doesn't light you up or inspire you or feel good anymore. And don't feel guilty about saying no. Right. That's the thing, like remove the guilt. That is it, Paul. And then, isn't it? I mean, I ask a lot of my clients daily a question like what what does it feel like to have fun or what lights up your world what do you love to do and it's so sad so many people have forgotten or they can't even answer that question I think then something personally is very out of 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 harmony or or balance that word is always tricky for me because what is balance but you know something is is not congruent to living their best life ever. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We love it. Well, so if a listener, someone is listening to this right now and and they're like, yeah, okay, self-care. I want to do that. <laughs> Where would you suggest that somebody start if they don't, if they have no practice of self-care right now? What's a small step uh, that maybe somebody could implement in their life or where, especially I think when it comes to the forming of the, the forming of the habit of self-care. And uh, what tips do you have for our listeners to really incorporate this and weave this into life with some uh, intention? Yeah, great question. And of course, it's going to mean something different for everybody. I think my biggest self-care tip would be look at how you start your day. Are you running out of bed with the alarm and jumping out without mindfully being aware of your beautiful body, the space that you're in. So I would invite all the listeners just today to create a self-care habit when you awake in the morning. And if you have to wait with alarm, I do too, because otherwise I would, I would sleep in. But just put the alarm, switch the alarm off, get back into bed if, if it's something um, you have to get out of bed or sit on a chair, by your bed, whatever that is, and take a moment to 
connect with your breath. Three or four deep breaths in through the nose and out of the mouth and ask yourself, how can you nourish yourself today first? And just tune into that. That could be a feeling. It could be a taste. It could be a word. It might be a color. And if you start to do that every morning and they say, don't they, it takes at least 21 to 40 days just to start a habit or keep a long-term habit. So that takes two or three minutes. But again, circling back to how we do one thing is how we do everything. If you start your day in an energetic vibration of chaotic rushing, that is often how the day will translate there on in. So starting your day, connecting inwards with the breath, and asking yourself, what is going to nourish me today? That's where I would begin. Love it. Simple. Definitely doing that tomorrow. (laughs) And maybe (laughs) keeping a little notepad, you know, when we can translate something down into writing, you know, we think we're going to remember it. I started keeping a little journal, a me journal, what nourishes kupu by my bed? It's just a, 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 you know, a cheap lined journal. Um, but writing down what comes into my mind, because the more we can engage with that sensory right brain part of who we are, the greater we can develop our senses and a true knowing of what really nourishes us. We think it's our left brain, but in fact, it's our heart space and our right receptive feeling oriented center so physically writing that word or picture or doodle whatever it is it might look like nothing but when you look back after 21 days you'll see a pattern of what shows up it's amazing great insight Hmm. so cool you know as as people who do uh coaching with entrepreneurs and individuals for you know, professional and personal development, we we suggest a lot of types of tracking, right? You track your time, you track your right. energy, we track even our food and our exercise. And what an amazing new tool for, for us to learn about tracking how you, like in the core of your being, what will nourish you? What nourishes you? What are you craving? And I mean, this is fascinating to me. I've never, I've never heard of this. I'm so excited to try to see yeah, what I'd those patterns are. That. You know, and the other day it was Maltese's dark chocolate for me. And it's okay, right? Yes. <laughs> that is perfectly okay. That yeah, is and awesome. it might, yeah. So I would invite all of you to look at that. Yeah, be cool to share. It's it really cool. becomes your, your, manual of of who you are and uh, it's one of the reasons that when we created our our pl- weekly planning system we in- included the the process of creating a joy list because we've found that in this day and age as you mentioned right people are so disconnected from what even brings them joy perhaps from just years of living maybe for other people or being run by the shoulds in their life. And so we get further and further disconnected from our truth. And so this is a really great way to, I love it. What a great strategy for kind of re rebuilding your list of what, what do you love? What excites you? What lights you up? What nourishes you? And uh, what a powerful thing to be able to reflect on yourself and also to share with the people that love you. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, making self-care easy, right? And fun. Fun. We love that. Just say, easy and fun. (laughs) Yeah. Totally. Well, for those people listening who are like, oh, Emma Kupu, I need more Emma Kupu in my life. How can people connect with you and where can they find you? Yeah, thank you. I think, well, I have my website. That's probably the, the easiest platform to go to is Emma Kupu Mitchell, 
www.jennyfrederick.com. And from there, I do have quite an active Facebook and Instagram accounts as well. There's a calendar of all the events um, and even including the podcast link, the new podcast. So everything there is on the website. I think that's the, the one easy step for people to find me and connect Wonderful. And we'll be sure to include all the, all the links in the show notes for this episode and also, uh, information about your new podcast so people can get subscribed and hooked in to Awakened Woman Self Care. Well, thank you so much for sharing some time with us today. This has just been so wonderful. And I'm sure, uh, I, I, like all of our listeners like us feel inspired to set up a really nice morning ritual for ourselves tomorrow morning. So thank you for that. And uh, thank you for the beautiful work you're doing in the world. Thank you both. It's been a pleasure and a joy to join you and the listeners. And thank you and who are for all you're doing makes a huge difference in the world. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this interview with Emma Kupu. You can find all the info for this show at bestlifeever.buzz slash episode 80. We have a very special announcement. We are super excited to announce our new Time and Energy Mastery digital program. We've been working hard on a productivity, time, and energy training that you can do in the comfort of your own home. We give you all the tools you need to level up your productivity in your work and your life. This includes worksheets, downloads, strategies, and access to us. Work smarter without even having to put your pants on. Find out more at bestlifeever.buzz slash productivity.